Hello and welcome again my friends. Today is 12-7-2021 and this is day 10 of the Odin Project vlog. Um, as you can see I changed my um, uh, dashboard uh, mission statement just a bit. Um, did this a while back but I just forgot to showcase it. And it just says complete foundations and all projects. Also start at least one personal project if it says so. Um, which I've already done. Well, I haven't done a personal project yet, but I've already got a project under my belt, and that's what we're going to be going over tonight. So, um, or today. Um, sorry, it's kind of evening here. I keep saying that, but anyway, I'm 43% complete of the found through the foundations courses. It's moving right along, and if we go to, oh, that's the next one. Um, go to the foundations here. You can see I am down to uh, recipes project in the HTML foundations course, uh, kind of a wrap up. So today we're going to spend pretty much the whole time in the uh, code editor. So um, just wanted to let you know um, because in here it just basically talks about um, how to get set up and get going, and then gives you the uh, project assignment. You can see they. They do iterations. Um, they kind of walk you through some of it, just more like hints. They don't handhold you. They really expect you to either research it on your own or go off memory, which most of us able to go off memory. So without further ado, let's hit the code editor. Text editor, sorry about that. <clears throat> so here we are. I'm going to attempt to kind of run through it with you top to bottom. Again, this is a this is a project, so this is over the course of two days. I didn't upload yesterday, so here I am today. So this is, this is you know, two days, not days worth of work, but, you know, I probably got uh, probably a couple hours into it. Um, so it was, as you can understand, it's way too much to try to put into a video. So we won't be typing live today. We'll just be going over what I already did. And, of course, my luck, <laughs> my uh, virtual machine locked up like literally just before I was going to start recording so I lost all my uh, history on my um, terminal and I was I used git and you know git add and git commit with comments and I did a really good job with that and unfortunately it's all gone so you won't be able to see any of that work on the command line um, but I will show you my github account uh, later on that shows the the commits and the comments and all that so um, without further ado, uh, here we go. So it says to create, excuse me, <clears throat> it says first off to create the Odin Recipes project folder. And you do that not here, but you do it on GitHub and you clone it here um, as we've talked about pre in previous uh, lessons. So you create that, you clone it down, and then it clones down every basically nothing. None of this is here. It clones down the folder, and then it has you create a readme file, and then that's basically all it brings down. Uh, so it brings that down, and then it tells you to create an index index.html file, as we've done before inside the Odin recipes, and that creates um, the shell here. And then this is, uh, as you're well well aware at this point, this is the boilerplate file. Uh, structure template structure and basically what it says is to do that and then build off of that so I it said to call it Odin recipes there's my h1 heading there's my home page that shows up uh, as a tab and here are three links that you make throughout it these as you can see these are what we learned learned last time these are relative uh, uh, relative links meaning they are residing within my own project not on the web this one goes to meatloaf.html this one goes to homemade mac and cheese and this one goes to best green bean casserole and I have hyperlinks for each um, basically I created the the exercise has you create each one individually by going out to basically allrecipes.com and grabbing the text out of there and the image and you basically just create your own recipe um, uh, website if you will a very basic but recipe website and that's all this is uh, so here is the three links and this is what it looks like in the browser Odin recipes meatloaf homemade mac and cheese and green bean casserole 
So if you hit the meatloaf, it takes you over to my meatloaf HTML, and this is all it is. So here's here's a, he a heading, heading one, obviously. As you create multiple headings, heading two, heading three, and heading four. And then this is just simply a paragraph uh, with, you know, basically a little description of what it is. And then it has you put in a uh, image. And so these are PNGs. I had a little trouble with the JPEGs. So these are PNG files. And I'll show you in a second where they're stored. And then you'll see this here is a um, unordered list that we created. And this is basically the ingredients to make the meatloaf. And this is the steps it took to create it. And this is an ordered list, as you can see, because it's one, two, three, four. So we know that's an ordered list. And that's the nitty gritty of it. Uh, that's what it does. Um, and I rep it said to replicate it, reiterate over it three times. So here's a homemade mac and cheese. Um, sorry if this is kind of small to see, but um, you get the point. Um, not going to blow these pages up. But basically, there's your. There's your title. <laughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I got Tourette, so you have to work through, work with me a little bit on this. So, anyway, um, here we go with the homemade mac and cheese. Here's uh, this would be heading one. This would be heading two. Heading three. Heading four. As we learned before, getting smaller and smaller as you go down the headings, which means less and less importance emphasized. Again, here's the description, which is just a paragraph tag. Here's in uh, bolded, unordered list. And here are the steps in an ordered list. And it'll be the same thing with the best green bean casserole. So um, go over back to the code. And here's what it looks like in the code. So I had basically went out to the web and I took screenshots of the green bean casserole. Those images you've seen are sitting inside the images folder underneath Odin recipes. So you'll see that there. And then in a recipe under, so if I collapse, this might be easier to see, easier to visualize. Um, actually, I need to make this bigger. Apologize for that. Okay. So here, there's your images, there's your recipes. There's the index file we just went over, and the, and the README that gets uh, that got cloned down from GitHub. So the images have the screenshots I took, the PNG files, and here are the recipes. These are the three different uh, links that go to the different HTML pages that are inside recipes. That's why you see the link here. So there's your parent, which is Odin Recipes, and then in the Recipes folder, and then Meatloaf. Same thing here parent folder, recipes, homemade mac and cheese, homemade mac and cheese, recipes, parent folder. And the same for the best green bean casserole. Parent folder, recipes, best green bean, grass, blah, best green bean casserole. Struggle bus again. So um, there's that. And so if we look at the different pages, here's the meatloaf page. Um, I know it's kind of truncated here because I blew it up so you guys could see it, but this is basically the first one you hand jam in manually. Basically, you call it. There's your title, meatloaf. There's your he heading one. Uh, there's your heading two. There's your image source. Uh, see here, I had a little bit of struggle with this when I was creating it. Um, I was getting a little. I couldn't remember on the uh, on the dots here, the four dots, if they were one or two. This is two because it. I'm probably going to butcher the explanation, but because it has to go up, this particular source file has to go up to two parents uh, to get to where it's sitting. Because you're, you're currently sitting <coughs> in meatloaf.html, but you need to get to the meatloaf image file. So it actually sits in a different folder underneath Odin. So you go one up, you know, or one up, two up to get to Odin. And then back down through images, and then your images. So that's how, why that has that double dots there. And then that's there's your alternative, as we talked about before, alternative text for screen readers, uh, picture of delicious meatloaf, delicious meatloaf. And then there's everything we just went over, um, but this is in the code form, you know, as it was presented in the browser. 
So just nothing crazy. It just keeps going over a little ways because I'm, I'm, you know, we got this blown up for you to see. So, um, so here's your uh, uh, order list. That was the steps for the cooking, and then here's your unordered list for ingredients, and that would be um, the bulleted points. Same thing for uh, homemade mac and cheese. Same exact same thing. It basically just have you. So what I did is I just copied and pasted the basically the meatloaf, created a new HTML file called homemade mac and cheese, and just started substituting out the uh, information as appropriate. Um, it's the same structure, exact same boilerplate, and exact same um, tagging. So um, the only difference here is again it goes double dot because we got to go up to get that to to the parent double doubling out to get to the parent to get to the images to get to the mac and cheese uh, ping, ping file P, uh, png file excuse me and then uh, meatloaf we already went over that green bean casserole same thing double dot images green bean cast to get the image picture and then alternate text and then just the same thing uh, an order list an order list uh, pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward, and then the README, um, this came down, and then I just typed in, this was a fun fun little project to build out a recipes website. I learned a lot about Git and GitHub as I committed often, usually after a page is created and linked to index.html. I got practice on trying to write good commit comments, although I feel there is much left to be desired on that part. I will continue to improve on this as I get more practice. I also got to put into practice all that I've learned in foundations thus far, like boilerplates, headings, paragraphs, alternative text, images, links, unordered and ordered lists. The list goes on there. Um, I'm enjoying the journey, and I look forward to more challenges ahead. And then I'll show you my GitHub. This will kind of give you a little artifact here. So, so it, you see my commits. I have 10 commits. So like I said, I did it very often. Um, and the first time I did it, I made a mistake. <clears throat> I won't say it was a mistake, but I, a misunderstanding, I think, was when I did the the git commit. I did the git commit with the comments based on all the files at once, instead of doing them individually. Like all these said, for instance, added you know the greenhouse JPEG to the images folder. They all said it because I did one big commit with multiple files and I didn't realize that it was going to do that. So learning learning lesson. And unfortunately I can't show you that because again my terminal crashed so or my whole VM crashed. So I lost my terminal session that had that on there. So and I don't know how to just because I haven't played with GitHub too much. I don't know if there's a way for me to I won't mess with it now. I don't know of a way. There probably is a way to show the the uh, commit history here. Maybe I'll look into that and put in tomorrow's uh, lesson or something. But anyway, you can see all these have individuals now. So after I learned that, the next time I did my git commit and git push, when I did the push, I made sure that all my git commits were individual, which took extra long time, um, but I think it was worth it. So I got individual uh, comments for each thing. So if you go to recipes, create a new page called best bean green bean grass that best green bean casserole under that one, and then added page and the you know as you can see et cetera et cetera. I tried to make comments for each one, and, and before it would just be the same thing for all of them, which I thought was pretty useless, especially since we went over a whole exercise on how, on how to create create good uh, comments in your commits. So here's the recipe. Oh, already went over that. And here's the images, same thing, added, added. Uh, oh, here's the one. This is, so it said place place marker text for readme, create index, and meatloaf. So it's a really long one that, there you go, place marker for te text for readme, create index, HTML, meatloaf, HTML for Odin project recipes. But everything said that, like everything, every file, every asset on here. And I was like, why did it do that? So learning curve for me, uh, always do your git add and then git commit to one individual file and then do your git commit uh, slash m and then put your quote like we showed you last time with the quotes and then put your comment in for that particular file and just do it individually um, please comment below if I'm wrong and there is a better way to do that and still get uh, 
the granularity like we have here or am I completely wrong and I was right originally and everything should be the same everything should have the same name go ahead and comment below I'm open to uh, correction and I'm I'm new I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys that I know everything because I do not and I'm always learning uh, part of my learning quickly as a developer as uh, aspiring developers that if you aren't learning you're dying so always be humble and always be hungry for more so and that's basically it and I kinda use this to remember my git there's the git commit I was telling you about so git commit this is what I did before I git add all of them and then did git commit but that literally put the commit code on every single file and I, I just didn't feel like that was right maybe it is maybe it is um, uh, check me in the comments if you'd like um, and I'll read them um, so that's about it um, we are done with HTML for now and we are going to be heading over into CSS foundations this will be interesting I, I feel like I have a less much less of a grasp on CSS than I do HTML so this this will be more of probably slower going and more learning curve for me than than HTML but I really look forward to it as I put in my readme file and I hope you guys learned something today with me and appreciate you taking the time to um, subscribe and like the videos and and view and watch these and comment I appreciate all that so this is just as much for you guys as it is for me for for rehashing it and kind of pseudo teaching it and learning it so anyway that's it for now and I'll catch you on the next one see ya